Today's lesson will help you to learn what a phrase is. A phrase. And will show you how to differentiate between the main types of phrases. I have lots of examples to help you understand the lesson better. And if you watch carefully, you will discover two tips to help you along the way. At the end of the lesson, as always, you can take a short quiz and see how well you have understood the topic. How does that sound? I'm Malene from English Made Easy. I'm an English teacher and my channel is dedicated to creating easy and interesting lessons so that you can improve your English in an enjoyable way. If you like the lesson, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you want to receive more content like this, do subscribe to English Made Easy. Let's begin. First of all, you should know what a phrase is. A phrase is a group of words that can stand alone as an individual grammatical unit. It could be a part of a clause or a part of a sentence, but it will not convey a complete thought. It will not have a subject and it will not have a verb. No subject, no verb. Only then it is a phrase. Phrases are usually added to sentences to make them more complex. Very often, phrases are used to carry a special idiomatic expression. I'll give you a few examples. Here are the examples. These two are phrases. The yellow hat, the grocery store. The yellow hat. As you can see, this is a phrase because it does not convey a complete thought. It does not make complete sense. The yellow hat. What about the yellow hat? There's nothing else told to us about it. It also does not have a subject or a verb. A verb is a word that shows action. It does not have any of those. Look at the second example, the grocery store. The grocery store, but what about it? So it does not convey a complete thought. Besides that, it does not have a subject and it does not have a verb. Okay, these two are phrases. Here are a few important things to remember about phrases. One. A phrase is a group of words that adds meaning to a sentence. Two, a phrase is not a complete sentence because it does not have a verb, a subject, and a predicate. Three, a phrase cannot exist independently as it does not have a main verb. Four, a phrase may occur before and or after the main verb in the sentence. Five, a phrase can be found at the beginning, middle or end of a sentence. Six, a sentence may contain more than one phrase. Shall I repeat it? The first point to remember a phrase is a group of words that adds meaning to a sentence. Second point, a phrase is not a complete sentence because it does not have a verb, a subject and a predicate. Third point, a phrase cannot exist independently as it does not have a main verb. Fourth point, a phrase may occur before and after the main verb in the sentence or before or after the main verb in a sentence. Five, a phrase can be found at the beginning, middle 
or end of a sentence. Six, a sentence may contain more than one phrase. So these are the six things that you need to remember about phrases. I have some more examples to show you what I mean. Think of this phrase, five tall giraffes. It's a phrase because it does not have a subject. It does not have a predicate. It does not have a verb. Five tall giraffes. I have another phrase for you. After a long walk or over the rainbow, in an hour, very sweet, the men in the room. All these are groups of words. They're all groups of words, right? And they add meaning to a sentence. But they are not complete sentences. They do not convey a complete thought. Why? Because they do not have a main verb, they do not have a subject, and they do not have a predicate. They cannot exist independently. For example, if I say five main, five tall giraffes, or after a long walk, it cannot exist independently. It has to have other words with it. Only then will it make complete sense. Again, consider five tall giraffes. It could be placed before the main verb in the sentence or after the main verb in the sentence. When you write a sentence, you can put a phrase in the beginning of the sentence, in the middle of the sentence, or at the end of the sentence. So I could say, five tall giraffes were walking down the road, putting it in the, be in the beginning of the sentence. I could say, I saw tall, I saw five tall giraffes walking down the road, putting it in the middle of the sentence. Or I could put it at the end of a sentence by saying something like this. Um, when I looked out of the window, I saw five tall giraffes. Okay. And a sentence doesn't have to have only one phrase. It could have two phrases, or three phrases in it. A phrase is just a group of words that add meaning to a sentence. And remember that a phrase does not have a main verb, it does not have a subject, and it does not have a predicate. It just exists so that it can add more meaning to that particular sentence. And so you don't have to have only one phrase in a sentence. You can have two phrases or three phrases or even four sentences, four phrases in a sentence. Here is a useful tip for you to remember. If you find a group of words that seem to be like an expression and they do not contain a subject, a predicate or a verb, then it is a phrase. And now that you know what a phrase is, let's learn the different types of phrases. We will only do the five most basic types of phrases in a simple and easy way so that you can understand them very well and never forget them. Shall we start? All right, the first type of phrase is a noun phrase. In order to understand what a noun phrase is, you have to know what a noun is. So do you know what a noun is? A noun is a naming word like the name of a place, a thing like bed, basket, wall, fan, table, chair, these are all nouns. So if you have a noun present in a group of words, that will become a noun phrase. Let me show you an example. Here's an example for you. An example of a noun phrase. The woman in the window called out to me. Now what you can see here is a complete sentence. The phrase is only the part that I have underlined. The woman in the window. Well, why is it a noun phrase? It's a noun phrase because it has a noun in it. A noun phrase is a group of words that contain a noun and associated words that modify it, that change it. Nouns are naming words, don't forget that. And in this example, woman and window are nouns. 
in the window adds meaning to the noun woman. And therefore, this, of course, is a sentence, but the woman in the window is the phrase. The woman in the window, a noun phrase. Now let's look at another type of phrase, a verb phrase. Why is it called a verb phrase? It is called a verb phrase because it has a verb and sometimes a helping verb in it. What is a verb? A verb is a word that shows action. And so I'll read the sentence to you. Mother is cooking a meal. What is mother doing? She's doing something. She's showing action. Mother is cooking a meal. So is cooking is the phrase here. I've underlined it. Is cooking is the phrase and it is a verb phrase because it is, it has a verb and is showing action. What action? Cooking. All right. Cooking is the main verb and is in this case is the helping verb. Let's move on to the next type of phrase. Here is an adjective phrase and it is called an adjective phrase because it has an adjective in it. What is an adjective? An adjective is a describing word. So where's the describing word here? Beautiful. Beautiful is the describing word. It is describing a noun. Which noun is it describing? House. So he lived in a beautiful house. He lived in a beautiful house is of course a sentence, but a beautiful house is a phrase. I've underlined it. A beautiful house is an adjective phrase because it has an adjective in it. Beautiful. It describes a noun. Which noun? House. Got that? Here's the fourth kind of phrase. It is called an adverb phrase. Why? Again, just because it contains an adverb. So what's an adverb? An adverb is a word that modifies, changes the meaning of or adds meaning to a verb and a word that shows action. So if the group of words function as an adverb, then it is an adverb phrase. In this sentence, spoke is the verb as you can see, okay? And since this group of words contains an adverb, it is an adverb phrase. The phrase here is spoke respectfully. This is a complete sentence. She always spoke respectfully, but the adverb phrase is spoke respectfully. Let's move on now to the fifth kind of phrase. Here's the fifth one and it's called a prepositional phrase. Comes from the word preposition. So it must contain a preposition. For that, you would have to know what a preposition is. Do you remember? A preposition is a word that shows the position of something in relation to something else, like on, between, among, above, below, all these are prepositions. In this case, we have he was lying on the floor. He was lying on the floor is a complete sentence. On the floor is a phrase. Just those words because the preposition on has been used here. So he was lying on the floor. On the floor. On is a preposition and hence this on the floor is a prepositional phrase. So what are the five types of phrases that we have learned so far? Let's go over them and see if you remember. The first kind of phrase that we did was the noun phrase. Why is it called the noun phrase? Because it has a noun in it, a naming word. The second kind of phrase that we did was the verb phrase. And why is it called a verb phrase? simply because it has a verb in it, a doing word, a word that shows action. The next kind of phrase is an adjective phrase. 
It's called an adjective phrase because it has an adjective in it, which means a describing word. It describes a noun better, helps us to understand something more about the noun in the sentence. Then we learned the adverb phrase. And why is it called an adverb phrase? Because it has an adverb in it. What's an adverb? An adverb is a word that adds meaning to a verb. Hence, it's called an adverb. And then we did a prepositional phrase, which is a group of words that has a preposition in it. What are prepositions? They are words that show position of something in relation to something else, like in, on, above, below. All these are prepositions showing you the position of something in relation to something else. So all you have to do when you want to recognize the type of phrase you can see in front of you is to decide whether it has a noun, a preposition, a verb, an adverb, you know, decide whether it has that in it and then you will know what kind of phrase it is. It's just that simple, all right? You have to remember though that there may be very little difference between a noun phrase and an adjective phrase in structures where the adjectives occur before the word it qualifies. Most noun phrases consist of a head noun plus one or more adjectives or indeed an adjective phrase itself. For example, I could say a cold winter so you have an adjective there used before the noun. Noun is winter, cold is the adjective. Or another example would be a red-faced baby. So baby is the noun and red-faced is the adjective that is describing the noun baby. All the same, here is another useful tip for you. When you want to decide what kind of phrase it is, look at the group of words very carefully and see if you can find a noun, a verb, an adjective, a preposition, an adverb in it. That will help you to find your answer fast. Did I make all that clear? Like I said in the beginning, there are other kinds of phrases too, but these five are the main kinds, so I have dwelt on these five only in this lesson. And now, if you have understood this lesson very well, I have a short quiz for you. So let's see if you can look at the sentences I show you and identify what kind of phrase you can see in them. Are you ready to try that out? I'll just show you all the sentences. Let's start with these two sentences. She walked across many deserts. And the second one. They traveled around the world. I have underlined the phrase for you in each of these sentences. So what kind of phrase is across many deserts? And what kind of phrase is around the world? Now, because it is the first two sentences that you are doing, the first two phrases that you are identifying, I'm going to help you a little bit. Like I said earlier, when I was giving you the tip, look at the phrase carefully. Look at the words in the phrase and check and see if it has a noun, an adjective, an adverb, a verb, or a preposition. And that is going to help you decide whether it is a noun phrase, an adjective phrase, a prepositional phrase, and so on. So let's figure these two out first before we move on. Here's the answer to both these. Both the phrases that you can see are prepositional phrases. Why is that? Because there are prepositions in both of them. Across and around. Both are prepositions. You might say, but I saw a noun there. I saw deserts. I saw world. Then why is it not a noun phrase? Because there's a preposition. And the preposition is showing you the relation of the noun with something else. For example, the noun and the pronoun in this case, she walked across many deserts. And then the second pronoun, they traveled around the world. So they and the world, she and the deserts. 
So you'll have to be careful of that. Even though you can see a noun here, you have to check and see what the meaning of the sentence is. Is it showing you the relation of something to something else? The position of something to something else? And then you will have to decide what kind of phrase it is. So in these two cases, these are definitely prepositional phrases. I hope you got them right. Let's move on and do some more. Have a look at the third and fourth one now and see if you can decide what the answers are. He was shouting very loudly. She can smell the roses. The phrase in the third one is shouting very loudly. And the phrase in the fourth one is can smell. Tell me what your answers are. Do check your answers. The third one is an adverb phrase and the fourth one is a verb phrase. Okay, let's do two more and see how you do those. Look at the fifth and the sixth one. They ran really fast and the phrase here is really fast. The sixth one, I am very happy with her work. The phrase here is very happy. So pick out your answers carefully. Here are the answers. The fifth one is an adverb phrase and the sixth one is an adjective phrase. Do you want to do two more? The last two, let's do number seven and eight and then we'll end. Number seven and eight. He is sitting on the chair. The phrase here is on the chair. And the eighth one, that magnificent boat was built by my father. The phrase is that magnificent boat. Do try these two out as well. See if you got them right. The seventh one on the chair is a prepositional phrase. And the eighth one, that magnificent boat is a noun phrase. So how many of these did you get right? Did you get all right? I certainly hope so. If you found the lesson useful, don't hesitate to share it with a friend who might benefit from it as well. Until we meet again, keep practicing and keep improving. Practice makes perfect. You'll see me again in the next video. Until then, take care. Cheerio.